Imagine a bunch of rockets and drones and water rockets and fighting robots and robots playing soccer. This isn't the plot of a new sci-fi movie out in theaters now. No, this is actually what I got to see when I went to Consensia 2024, which is the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology's Tech Fest. And all this happened earlier this month. But why was I there? They invited me to give a talk to the young minds present at the fest. And the whole experience just gave me so much more confidence about the future of this country. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Without further ado, my name's Pranav and you're watching Science is Dope. This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. If you wish to support me, you can find the links below. I'm a science creator who's been creating content on YouTube for the past couple of years. But whenever I do upload science content on my channel, I can guarantee you it won't do nearly as well as my other content debunking pseudoscience or commenting on religion. Maybe it's because at the end of the day, a video on science is not a roast on the show Big Boss, which is bound to have a lot more drama. Maybe it's because most of my audience isn't really interested in science, despite me having the word science in the name of the channel. It's like someone regularly eating biryani at some place, despite not liking rice. I'm not complaining or anything. Uh, we're allowed to like whatever we find interesting. And it's my job as a creator to figure out where my audience's interest lies and cater my content to that. But that brings us to this curious question, why is science so unpopular in India? I mean, the performance of science videos on my channel is one thing, but I've seen other channels in India attempting science topics. But they have to go out of their way with thumbnails and titles and clickbait and the hook of the video. And I still see them getting far fewer views than what a video of that caliber should be getting in my opinion. Now I'm talking about channels that genuinely try to cover good science and not channels that try to misinform their audience in the name of science. Now contrast this, if you will, with science content outside of India. It's a very popular genre. Lots of extremely popular channels. I'm sure you, the person watching this video, is subscribed to many of these. So my question was this, why is science not so popular in India while it's very popular outside of India? I have a theory. Many of us grow up hating science in school, mostly because of bad teachers or maybe because of some bad experience we had with the subject. Or maybe because our parents forced it down our throat like some vegetable from hell. I probably shouldn't be taking that clip so lightly because this is a perfect example of how bad this whole thing is for the mental health of a young child. They begin associating math or science with something bad or at least unpleasant. It's no surprise why a lot of children grow up hating math and science. On top of this, when I was of school going age, India wasn't a particularly economically strong country or anything. Most families saw education as a tool to improve their financial status. And especially education in science subjects because that's where all the high paying jobs were. So if you score well in science, get a good entrance exam rank, get into a good college, get a good job, make lots of money, that solves most of your life's problems. So a lot of people end up valuing science in what it can give you, money. Most people don't value what comes here. The process of learning science is not seen by a lot of them as having much value. I'm one of the exceptions, not because I have no money and my channel is probably dying. By the way, memberships cost 5 dollars a month. Just kidding. Jokes aside, I call myself an exception because I genuinely like learning science, as I'm sure is the case with many viewers of this channel. I call myself an exception because I grew up in this system and I don't just see value in science, I see beauty in science. It fascinates me to no end. It's almost dangerously close to me being a coke addict and science being my coke. Simply learning and exploring these stories and science, it 
fulfills me in ways that I didn't even know was possible. That's what she said. <laughs> And I try to share these stories in the best way I can with my videos. So you can imagine how much it disappoints me when these videos are not received well compared to videos that contain more masala. When you compare this with the attitudes of people in a more developed country towards science, you can clearly see a difference. People don't have this need to pursue science due to this familial pressure. And the ones that do, do it because they are genuinely interested in the topic, in whatever they're learning. And I think this is one major reason that contributes to science being a much more popular genre in such countries. And don't get me wrong that I'm blaming people watching my videos when my videos don't get views. I'm not. I think the entire education system is to blame for people's attitude towards science. Let's start with how much teachers are being paid. Teaching is clearly not one of those top tier jobs in this country with a lot of competition. And clearly if top tier talent doesn't teach a subject, you can't expect those teachers to be able to bring out that same level of interest in their students. But despite all this, I think there are some really great teachers in India. They may not be as common. And I'm really fortunate to have had a lot of them as my teachers while growing up. I look at a country like Finland, where the education system is so robust that teaching itself is a high paying, highly sought after job. And everything that follows is a trickle down effect where every student that passes out of the system is so good at what they do that the entire society benefits. I can talk about a lot more problems with our education system. The way exams promote mindless problem solving and rote learning without any understanding of what they're learning. The way curriculums are set in textbooks sometimes by people who decide what a student should learn and not learn. The minimal or sometimes absolutely no care given to the mental health of students, which sometimes results in the students unaliving themselves. These are all problems that probably require a dedicated video of me talking about these things. And these are problems I wish I had the power to solve overnight or anyone could solve overnight. But sadly, they're not. They're complex problems that require systemic solutions that no doubt will take years. But I want to use this video as an opportunity to talk about this dislike of science that's common. How does a lack of interest in science affect people? Now, on the one hand, you can argue that Okay, so what? Science, which is just one genre of content that's not very strong in India. Is that such a big deal? Ah, but that's the problem, isn't it? The fact that you're asking this question means you just see science as another genre of content. But it's so much more than that. It affects every part of your life. Even if you forget all the amenities and technologies that make every moment of your life better and more comfortable, you still have more. Right from what food you eat, to what thoughts and beliefs you tend to hold, to what medical decisions you tend to make, and where you tend to spend your money. These are all informed by science. I constantly see people going to babas or priests or religious godmen or astrologers or homeopaths. Or I see the popularity and the growth of many misinformers on social media. And their audience, or I should say their victims, a lot of it is not their fault. It's due to a lack of information at their hands. Information which will tell them how to think rationally about these things. It's like whenever there is a lack of knowledge or understanding about something, that's where you'll find these scammers and babas and misinformers flocking in because they have an opportunity to make money. And all this can only be solved by a more scientifically minded and scientifically thinking society. And it all starts with the classroom when the learner is young. It's about teaching them how to think rather than what to think. It's about curiosity and observation and concluding from there and not about getting your conclusions and ideas from scripture and making your observations fit that. One more thing. Why did I say earlier an interest in science and not knowledge in science? 
because knowledge without any interest creates someone who can score marks and ranks well and get into a very high position in their career and once they get there the ideas that they do spew is whatever nonsense they do have an interest in when you die there is a heart attack and people say doctor would say great oh he died of heart attack what is the big thing you are talking nonsense are when soul lives he lives here so immediately there will be heart attack this is your first day you see now from one cell you have become more than 100 trillion cells ek koshika jo hai स्पर्म और एग की मिलन से हो रहा है सभी को तो पता है इसकी केमिकल कंपोजिशन क्या है तो लेबोरेटरी में इसको कराओ ना मोर देन 300 हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ मॉडर्न साइंस वाई वी आर नॉट इवन एबल टू मेक ए सिंपल ग्रास मे बी यू शुड मेक वीडियो ऑन दिस गाय Where is if a person has an interest in science, that drive alone will make him or her go out and seek that knowledge themselves. It's like this: when you develop an interest in playing a musical instrument, no one has to tell you to go and play and practice it. You will be inspired to play it whenever you can, and at that point, learning or gaining knowledge about something becomes easy and effortless. I really wish the education system we have. thought this way i wish they had the perspective that learning can actually be fun and not a chore imagine the improvement in mental health of an average student coming out of this system imagine the amount of lives that could be saved and all this is true for any skill that you can think of i'm just more concerned with science in this video we need people to be scientifically minded so that they don't fall prey to avoidable harm and it's really easy as i've shown you all you need is an interest in science so now the question becomes how can we develop this interest i think the most important thing is to give people an avenue to experience science preferably hands on and outside of schools outside of academics I can't tell you the number of peers I've seen growing up who believe that science is something confined to classrooms and textbooks. I wish we had more things like these. One, astronomy workshops. The amount of fascination that I see in someone's face when they look through a telescope for the first time and see the rings of Saturn or the moons of Jupiter, it's almost indescribable, I tell you. Stargazing is immensely fascinating and is easily enjoyed with everyone in your family and no pressure is involved. in learning two hands on workshops the event i went to concentrate 24 had workshops around teams of students learning to build their own rockets and launching them these are the kinds of hands on stuff that people must have access to imagine the kind of fun everyone is having while learning this is what we need for people to learn that learning is enjoyable three hands on museums and exhibitions Events like these are a great place for attendees to experience science hands-on. Science museums and planetariums are also a great place. There's one in Bangalore, there might be one in your city. Check online and there might just be one. Four shows and performances. I was at the India Science Festival in Pune earlier this year and there was a performance where there were a bunch of simple science experiments being done on stage. Really simple ones dealing with pressure and surface tension and liquid nitrogen. So this is David Price and he is part of an organization from the UK called Science Made Simple. Now what they do is they have many shows and this is one of those shows. What the shows are intended to do is expose an audience to a science uh, that they normally would not have seen presented in that manner or with that content. With the amount of energy he had while performing, everyone wanted to see it. The show was not just sold out every single time the four times he performed at the festival. But there were people sitting on the edges of the building of the open air theater where he was performing. I want to see this kind of excitement around a show about science more often and in more places in the country. Five social media. The last but not the least would be pages on social media. Being outside academia, it's a great place for people of all ages to develop a fascination around science. The potential here is also massive because whatever niche you want to make content in is also something that you can find an audience for. This also tends to be the easiest and most accessible. of the avenues i spoke about 
But there is a caveat. The people will only look these pages up if they already have a small interest to begin with on the topics the page is talking about. And that brings me to the start of what I was saying. That was roughly what I spoke about at IAST. And I ended my talk with a hope for a more scientifically inclined nation. They gave me this at the end of my talk. This is a model of ISRO's LVM3 launch vehicle. I should probably find a place in my set to uh, put this somewhere. I'll think of it for the next video. I also want to thank them for being such great hosts and also for giving me this opportunity to talk about these things I really wanted to talk about. I had a lot of fun throughout the rest of the event, but what I saw over the rest of the fest is what filled me with hope for the future of this country. You know, about 10 years ago, I was a student just like these guys, participating in a tech fest in my own college. Yeah, just participating, no real winning. <laughs> I don't know how many of you know, but I'm an engineer and I graduated from NIT Calicut 10 years ago, more than 10 now, uh, and uh, they have a tech fest called Tatwa. And they had events just like the ones I got to see here. The only difference is that I got to see how far technology had come in the last 10 years. Like I never thought I'd get to see students launch actual model rockets. But I guess that's the least one should expect at the tech fest of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, which comes under the Department of Space. But apart from this, I saw people with drones and water rockets and remote controlled planes and cars. I saw robots playing soccer. I saw them fighting. On top of all this, I saw multiple exhibitions by ISRO and CDAC, most of which were hands-on. I got to play around with telescopes to satisfy my curiosity about objects in the sky. I got to hear a lot of really smart people talk about their work, particularly space and future missions of ISRO. I got to interact with a lot of people and talk about the work they get to do in their day-to-day -day at the institute, in their labs. And I got to get into an actual ISRO space shuttle and see how it works from the inside. Okay, fine, that last one did not actually happen. But the experiences I had throughout the three days of the fest were just amazing. They were fascinating, they were enjoyable, and thank you IAST for inviting me. But there was just one thought bouncing around in my head after seeing everything that I saw there. I could see how students there were way more preoccupied with science and tech. And this was just obvious throughout the fest. I think back about what our previous generations would have had to occupy their minds with. Not a lot of science and tech, for sure. I would assume it's stories from religion and myths and superstitions. A big chunk of it, not everything, but a big chunk of it. Compare that to today, when we have all the information that we need at the palm of our hand, what with the internet and all. Assuming you don't spend all day watching cringe reels on Instagram, you have all the information in the world right at your fingertips. But the internet also brings with it a couple of ideas that try to take people back a few steps back in the path of progress. Don't get me wrong, I think stories and legends and myths from uh, scripture can really be enjoyed as art and literature and entertaining storytelling. But one has to recognize that they're just that, legends. And I feel that these things, religions and superstitions are just overrepresented on social media, which is probably why we see a lot of it everywhere. And people who have nothing else to do watch all this content and creators, instead of at least trying to influence what people think, maybe change what people think, all they do is just cater to this audience and stroke their ego. And sometimes having seen what I get to see every day and having a job that's mainly me sitting on YouTube for hours on end, sometimes even I forget that what I'm seeing is not how things really are in the country. 
the ground reality is very very different the youth of this country are far more occupied with reality than with some world of myths and fantasy and what i've seen over those few days fill me with optimism for the future of this country and i personally will do everything i can to make sure that we get there if you like my content i encourage you to support me using one of these options which i've linked down below i would also like to thank these patrons who support me at my highest tiers thank you so much if you like this video you might also like this one i did on the real science that came out of india i'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope